deformed finger. Don't stick your finger in the ketchup bottle, mother said. It might get stuck, and then you'll have to wait for your father to get home to pull it out. He won't be happy to find a dirty fingernail squirming in the ketchup that he's going to use on his hamburger. He'll yank it out so hard that for the rest of your life, you won't be able to wear a ring on that finger. And if you ever get a girlfriend and you hold hands, she's bound to ask you why one of your fingers is deformed and you'll be obligated to tell her how you didn't listen to your mother and insisted on playing with the ketchup bottle and she'll get to thinking he probably won't listen to me either and she'll push your hand away. This is called Destroyed by a Habit. If you only learn not to pick your nose in public places, mother said, I'm sure you'll be a success in this world. Your girlfriends aren't going to like it. They'll think if he does it in public, imagine how many times he must do it in private. Your boss won't want to shake your hand no matter how good a job you do. Everyone will shun you. If you do it when no one is looking, then no one will care. But if you do it in front of people, they'll think he must be making some kind of a statement, like he never had a mother, which is certainly not true. This is called Finding Your Way Back Home. Don't lean on the display window, mother said. It might shatter. And if by some lucky miracle you don't get hurt, the manager of the store will make me pay for it. At first I'll try to pretend that I'm not your mother, but the urge to smack you will probably be greater than the act of disownership. And how will you get back home if I sneaked away? I keep imploring you to look at street signs once in a while. It might even improve your reading score. After reading, one woman said that she liked my poems, but she thought it was time I left the house. But And I told her I haven't lived home for about 20 years. I think about other things, too. This is called Girlfriend Over for Dinner, and it's a true story. She's very pretty, Mother said, but she's going to leave you. She was talking about the future, and you weren't in it. So I asked her to tell it to me again, just in case she made a mistake and left you out. But you weren't in the second version either. She talked about going away to school, and when I asked her what she was planning to bring with her, she talked about her coat, her boots, but she never mentioned you. She says she's very fond of you, but people say that about the puppies that were about to give away. So I had a girlfriend who wanted to meet my mother, which I thought was a really bad idea, but she kept pestering me about it. So finally I took her home to meet my mother, and, and my mistake was I had to go to the bathroom, so I left her alone with my mother. And then when I came out of the bathroom, my mother took me in the kitchen and told me this poem and said that she knows this girlfriend was going to leave me. And my mother was right. You know, my mother's always right, but I just needed a girlfriend. Even though I knew she was going to leave, I just wanted a girlfriend, so so I didn't care. And then on the bus ride home, this girlfriend knew what my mother told her. This is called Magnified. My parents got me a magnifying glass for a present. I went into my room, pulled down my pants, and made my penis twice as large. The further away I held the magnifying glass, the larger my penis became, until it was thicker than my arm. I looked around my room to see if there was anything I could do with the gigantic penis, but had no ideas. I put up my pants and went to the kitchen, where Mother said, Do you like your new toy? 
I told her that I did, but I wished that the thing I was magnifying stayed large even after I took the magnifying glass away. I wouldn't care for that, she said. The house is already messy. I wouldn't want it to be a bigger mess. This is called trial and tribulation. Don't stick, don't stick your finger, finger in, the in the electric, electric socket, socket, mother said. You, you get, get a shock, and, and if, if it, it doesn't, doesn't kill you, you, it'll leave, it'll a, lot leave a lot of static in your, in your hair. hair. It might not come, out, might with not shampoo. come out with shampoo. Your hair will stand, your straight, hair on will your stand straight on and your head. And everyone will know what and you everyone did. Know if what God you didn't did. want you to have curly hair, if God hair, didn't want you to have given you to a different mother, he'd have given you to a different mother. And I wonder why. But he gave you to me. I went to temple. And I wonder why. I said my prayers. I went to temple. I said my prayers. It's called my version of it. You told your friend that we were lovers, but I only remember sharing a cheese blinzer with you, and you took the bigger half. Actually, um, this. I had a, a spinach knish with this woman, but she was still living in New York, so I didn't want anyone to know it was her. I didn't want her to know either, but she moved out west, and so I don't have to worry about it, so I can tell you the truth. This is called Always Giving Commands. She bit my ear and said, fuck me, but that's what I thought I was doing. And I wrote this about this woman who asked me if I was writing poems about her. And I said I was, and she asked me to show her some of the poems. I never showed her this one, as you can see why. Timing. After we made love, we went out for dinner. I tried not to eat my linguine faster than her. I figured that if we couldn't have a simultaneous orgasm, we could at least finish eating at the same time. That relationship didn't last very long either. This is called the first hurdle. She said that her therapist approved of me. I felt like I passed the first test. Now all I needed was for her to like me. She would see a therapist on Wednesday afternoon, and I w kept expecting her to call me on Wednesday night and, and say that she decided to like me more because the therapist liked me, but it never happened. In fact, on Wednesday night, she was even worse. And the reason I read these relationship poems is to show that I don't always think about my mother all the time, that I have other things on my mind. This is called Two Second Kiss. Kissing her was like biting into a juicy orange and getting a mouthful of seeds. I read this once and this woman felt so sorry for me that she walked up to me and gave me a kiss. That hasn't happened since. This is called mother disapproval. She said that her mother wouldn't like me because I was Jewish. That didn't bother me. Her mother wasn't the one I wanted to sleep with. This is called dangerous kissing. I took you to a park that was so dangerous that you had to hold on to your pocketbook while kissing me. And I thought that if you were risking your life to kiss me, surely you'd take me back to your apartment where it was safe. But you must have liked danger. This is called A Dog's Heart. It's my series of dog poems where at one time I was getting along a lot better with these women, women's dogs than I was with them. The only reason I've stayed with you this long, she said, was because if I broke up with you, it would have hurt my dog, who has grown to depend on you for her daily walks and meals, whereas since you never did anything for me, luckily I'm able to walk and feed myself. It's hard for me to miss you, but I'm sure I will, 
because each time I hear my dog bark, she might be asking for you. It's called a new toy. She handed me a condom, but by the time I opened it, I wasn't able to use it. Then I saw her cat playing with it. I was glad someone got some use out of it. Problems of Modern Love. This is called Dark Red. I thought this was my lucky lipstick, she said, because I was wearing it when I met you. But now that you turned out to be not so nice, I'm going to get rid of it. I wish it was as easy to get rid of you. A lot of times people, they live inside your heads. They don't go away. This is called First and Last Time. I was nervous when we got into bed because the first time you do something, you set a pattern that is hard to break. I thought we, we might make love the same way for the rest of our lives, but I didn't have to worry. We never slept together again. This is called Chopped Off Arm, and this is my one performance poem where I actually move my arm, but since you can't see my arm, I'm going to make a sound effect. But don't worry, after this, there won't be any other sound effects in any of my poems. Chopped Off Arm. Don't stick your arm out of the window, mother said. Another car can sneak up behind us and chop it off. Then your father will have to stop. Stick the severed piece in the trunk and drive you to the hospital. It's not like the part of your telescope that snaps back on. A doctor will have to sew it. You won't be able to wear short sleeves. You won't want anyone to see the stitches. And one time I was walking in London and this woman looked at me and said, Oh my God, and she kept doing with the arm, and I didn't know what she was doing. I thought it was like a new neo-Nazi salute. Then I realized that she heard me read Chopped Off Arm. This is called Missing Finger. As you see, I have a lot of poems about missing ditches, about missing body parts. Is one of my themes. Missing Finger. Don't stick your hand in the water, Mother said, while your father's rowing. A fish might think that one of your fingers is a worm. I heard that the constant water in their eyes makes them nearsighted. He'll bite it off. Then you won't be able to count the ten on your fingers and you'll flunk all your math tests. And you won't be able to get a good grip on your baseball bat. And what would have been a home run will now become a single. And don't think that just because You'll have one less fingernail to cut will make your life easier and treat you like a cripple. Your remaining fingers must learn to work harder. This is called body parts. Keep your hand inside the railing, mother said, when you ride the escalator. I read once some out-of-town newspaper about this boy who got his index finger chopped off doing what you are doing. His parents rushed him to the hospital, but in all their excitement, they forgot to bring the chopped off finger with them. They went back to get it, but it was gone. Probably some cleaning woman threw it away. The doctors had to sew someone else's finger to the stump, and I heard that it doesn't match, that he wears gloves, even in the summer. All in the family. Don't lean against the car door, mother said. It may not be locked and you can fall out. You're no use to us dead. And even though you're not much use to us now, hopefully when you get older, we'll be able to find some use for you. If you become a doctor, you can check my blood pressure and give me free medicine whenever you come to visit. And what would be ideal is if you marry a dentist who can check my teeth. Emergency situation. 
I threw out your blue underwear, mother said. It had a hole in it. No son of mine will ever be caught wearing that. It's a reflection on me. It makes me look bad. I know no one can see it, but you can't be sure. Let's say you break your leg. You rush to the hospital. The nurse takes off your pants. She'll see it. The doctor may not even put on a cast because he'll think you come from a poor family. I didn't bring you up to embarrass me. When you were little, I dressed you up as a girl. You were gorgeous. You had curls hanging over your face. But let's be honest, you're no longer cute. You're too old to get away with anything.